adapt accordingly very, on a very uh, <laughs> very short amount of time. Right. Chariot tackle with punish again. Oh, never mind. Just what? a standing light punch this time. Oh, what a... That was so sick. Okay, here we go. Activation. Let's see. Oh, yes! You don't look... Oh, yes! I'm sure you've heard of it plenty of times while watching tournaments. It usually goes hand in hand with that other hazy and somehow cryptic word, footsies. I'm talking about whiff punish or whiff punishment. But really, what is it? What makes these clips have shown a demonstration of skill and not just some random sweeps that hit? I'm Mir, and today we're going to have a closer look at how whiff punishment works in Street Fighter V. First of all, a small refresher, which is fundamental to have an understanding of why all of this works in the first place. Whenever you execute a move in Street Fighter, be it a normal, a special move, or even a super, you are unable to block for the entire duration. Ignoring the fact that some moves can be invulnerable for a period, this means you can get caught during the startup, which would award your opponent a counter hit, trade or get beat during the active frames, based on the priority system, or get hit during the recovery frame, after the attack's hitbox has disappeared. This last situation is what we are going to analyze today. As the name implies, a whiff punish is the act of hitting an opponent out of the recovery of their attack, if the attack whiffed, or in other words, missed. Even though the reason why it works is the same, this is fundamentally different than block punishing, which is when, after blocking a move that is unsafe, you are able to hit the opponent before he recovers. When you block a move, a few frames of engine slowdown are triggered, commonly known as hit stop. On top of this, the move puts both characters in hit stun, or more correctly block stun, during which neither can act. Only after all of this has happened are you allowed to hit your opponent. This is also the reason why some moves are safe, or even plus on block, by the way. It's all based on whoever recovers first from hit stun. Whiff punishment, however, doesn't rely on you blocking or getting hit by the move you're trying to punish. And as such, the fact that said move might be plus or minus doesn't matter one bit. Unfortunately, because you aren't blocking anything, you are unable to use the extra frames of hit stop to get ready to punish, so hitting someone out of recovery can be difficult. In Street Fighter V, however, there are a couple of mechanics that might help you in this regard. Some moves, usually heavy normals or certain specials, have extra recovery frames on whiff. This has been put in the game specifically to make them riskier to just throw out in neutral, as it penalizes you for missing the opponent with the attack, instead rewarding correct spacing both by you and your opponent. On top of this, almost every attack has moving hurt boxes that extend as the animation happens, and in the case of specific moves that are designed to be more easily with punished, they stay out for a significant amount of time. In practical terms, what this means to us is that you're able to hit the extended hurtbox of the move in question, even if normally your attack wouldn't be able to reach the opponent, allowing you to hit them before they recover from further away than usual. Combined with the extra recovery time, it can enable you to consistently hit with moves as a reaction. As you might imagine, some moves are easier to whiff punish than others based on their total frames of animation, but sometimes we see some situations that apparently seem to require inhuman reactions. How does this even work? Well, using the same concept we described before, it's possible to set up a situation where your opponent's moves are going to whiff and we are able to catch their extended hurt box. But instead of reacting to the whiff, we're going to use some move that is either very active or has a recessed hurt box, or both, allowing us to counterpoke them safely without risking getting hit. This combined with the timing of the setup will let us catch their attack, even though we would normally be unable to react to it. This technique is not without downsides, however. Because you're not really reacting to a whiff, your move will come out regardless of what your opponent is doing. So if you end up using an attack that has a lot of recovery, you might be the one ending up getting whiff punished. As hinted at before, playing the neutral game and whiff punishment are intrinsically connected. Without whiff punishment, certain characters would be much harder to approach. If you think about it, although in a very broad way, jumping over a fireball and hitting the opponent can be considered whiff punishment as well. Oh yes, he's done it once, he'll do it again! Whiff punishment is an important skill to have to improve a Street Fighter V, and it carries over to a lot of other fighting games as well. If you want to get better at whiff punishing moves, there are a few ways to practice it, but for the most part it will require a certain investment of time just to get used to how the moves look when they whiff, and understanding how big a window you have to perform your punish. Sometimes you'll have to use moves that are unsafe on block to whiff punish, and that's just because that's what your character has access to. So you definitely want to do it right. Got it. Got it. 
That is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. As always, we will release more content like this in the future. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And I'll see you all next time. Oh my god! You gotta be kidding me! You have got to be kidding me! Man, snipe that out! He sniped the sniper! <laughs>